Hello everyone, welcome to SJ's classes. In the previous video lesson, we looked at the 20th century literary critic T.S. Eliot. We discussed some of the important concepts that are associated with him like dissociation of sensibility, objective correlative, the function of criticism and so on. In this video lesson, I will discuss yet another 20th century literary critic. I. A. Richards. Before we understand the critic in him, let's have a short introduction to this literary figure. Ivor Armstrong Richards was born on February 26, 1893 and died on September 7, 1979 in England. He was an English critic, poet and teacher who was highly influential in developing a new way of reading poetry that led to the new criticism and also influenced some forms of reader response criticism. Richards was educated at Magdalen College, Cambridge and was a lecturer in English and Moral Sciences there from 1922 to 1939. In that period, he wrote three of his most influential books, The Meaning of Meaning, which he associated with C. K. Ogden and that was published in 1923. It was a pioneer work on semantics and later in 1924 came Principles of Literary Criticism and finally his seminal work Practical Criticism came out in 1929. His scholarship and research on how students read poetry helped shape the foundation of the new criticism and its emphasis on close reading. Richards would give students poems in which the titles and authors' names had been removed and then use their responses for further development of their close reading skills. This led to the articulation of the theoretical principles of practical criticism, a method of increasing readers' analytic powers. Let's look at some of his poetical collections. In his own poetry, Richards wore philosophical argument with musical turns. In the last 20 years of his life, Richards published three collections of poetry. Goodbye Earth and Other Poems that came out in 1958, The Screens and Other Poems that came out in 1960, and Internal Colloquies, Poems and Plays of I.A. Richards that came out in 1971. Selections of these volumes are included in his New and Selected Poems that was published in 1978. Now let us discuss I.A. Richards, the literary critic. Richards is a prominent member among the 20th century literary critics. He is often referred to as the critical consciousness of our age. Many even regard him as the creator of modern criticism. It's interesting to note that John Crow Ransom begins his book The New Criticism with the remark that any discussion of the new critics must begin with Dr. Richards. His speculative and theoretical works include Science and Poetry, which was later revised as Poetries and Sciences, Minicius on the Mind, Coleridge on Imagination, The Philosophy of Rhetoric, Speculative Instruments, Beyond, Poetries, and Complementarities. Now there are a number of concepts that he has shared towards the realm of English literary criticism. Let's look at some of them. His very first and most important contribution is his idea regarding theory of value in the arts. Let us try to understand this concept. Out of the slew of contributions that he has made to literary criticism, the one that stands out the most is his theory of value in the arts. He was of the opinion that the aesthetic state is not any different from the ordinary state. An aesthetic experience is not different from any other experience. The only difference in an aesthetic experience is that a greater number of impulses, impulses means natural responses, greater number of impulses have to be brought into coordination with one another. So this is that only factor that differentiate 
an aesthetic experience from a normal ordinary experience in an aesthetic experience you have to consider you have to coordinate a greater number of natural responses you have to coordinate these responses these impulses are those stimuli that motivate attitudes in us as far as poetry is concerned Richards believed that it organizes our impulses and attitudes. It organizes our mind, gives it certain order, renders us happy and makes our mind healthy. Art in general is valuable for us in this sense that it integrates our activities, resolves our mental conflicts and tension and leads us to a liberated state. This is the theory of value in the arts that Richards found. And Richards also has a term to refer to this particular condition, this harmonized condition. Richards calls this harmonized state, this balancing of conflicting impulses, synesthesis. So this is his word, the term that refers to the harmonized state of affairs. And poetry helps us to organize our mind and give, give it certain order. He says that it renders us happy and makes our minds healthy. And you arrive at this particular state called synesthesis. Let's also look at some of the other contributions that he has made. The second is uh, the two uses of language that he uh, expounded along with C.K. Ogden, who is yet another British writer and linguist. One of his other contributions is the theory of language, which he expounded along with C.K. Ogden. They distinguished between two uses of language, the referential or scientific and the emotive. It is in the work Two Uses of Language that Richards tried to differentiate between the two. Now let's try to understand these two functions or uses of language. When language is used to refer to something, which is basically the scientific use of language, it is called the referential use. And when language is used to affect emotions and attitudes, it is called emotive function. In other words, a statement may be used for the sake of reference, which may be verified as true or false. This is the scientific use of language or the referential use. But language may also be used for the sake of the effects in emotions and attitudes produced by the reference. This is the emotive or poetic use of language. So he calls this second use, the emotive use as the poetic use of language. The poet uses words emotively for the purpose of evoking emotions and attitudes considering, considered valuable by him. Now we should also try to understand the four kinds of meaning that he proposed. And these four kinds or rather Four aspects of meaning are sense, feeling, tone and intention. When we make an utterance, we direct the attention of the listener to what we utter so as to make sense out of it. We also use language to convey our feelings by incorporating it into it our utterances. We arrange the tone depending on the context and whom we are addressing. Finally, we have some intention conscious or unconscious and modify our utterances based on it. There is always an interplay of these functions in any communication according to Richards. Let me explain the four concepts in detail. The very first is sense. Sense is that which is communicated by the plain literal meanings of the words. When the writer makes an utterance, he directs his hearer's attention upon some state of affairs, some items for their thought and consideration. This is what sense is all about. When you direct your hearers, your listeners, your audience attention to something. That is when the idea of sense prop pops out. Feeling refers to the feelings of the writer or speaker about these items, about the state of affairs he is referring to. Now He has an attitude towards it some special bias or interest, some personal flavor or coloring of it, and he uses language to express it. Tone means the attitude of the writer towards his readers. The writer or the speaker 
chooses and arranges the words differently as his audience varies depending on his relation to him to them besides these the speaker's intention or aim it can be conscious or unconscious should also be taken into account intention refers to the effect one tries to produce which modifies one's expression it controls the emphasis and shapes the arrangement richards means that richards try to say tries to say that the understanding of all these aspects is part of the whole business of apprehending the meaning of poetry so it, only if you have a general understanding of these four aspects of meaning then you will be able to arrive at a better understanding of meaning in poetry let us also look at some of richard's ideas on poetry richard's was of the opinion that poetry is made of pseudo statements which cannot be empirically tested and proved true or false a pseudo statement is a form of words which is justified entirely by its effect in releasing or organizing our impulses and attitudes poetry for him is emotive and cannot be expected to provide us with knowledge it communicates feelings and emotions and has nothing to do with meaning or knowledge it is necessary that we free poetry from entanglements with belief and knowledge that is why he admired eliot's the wasteland which is a poem that severs itself from all beliefs let's also look at richard's definition of a poem he defines a poem as a class of experiences composed by all experiences occasioned by words which do not differ within certain limits from the original experience of the poet so that is how he defines poem now as i r richards is closely associated with practical criticism you might want me to elaborate on it as well you might have heard about this movement before this concept before and i'm sure you are exposed to it but as we are discussing i r richards it's important that we state something regarding this movement as well the term that is closely associated with i r richards is practical criticism as i stated in the introduction he used to give poems to his students and he would not divulge any information about who wrote the poem or when they were written and in his work practical criticism that came out in 1929 he reported the analysis that he found that he did with the results of the experiments the objective of his work was to encourage students to concentrate on the words on the on the words on the page rather than relying on preconceived or received beliefs about a text richard analyzed the various factors largely responsible for the misreading of poems and also exposed our dependence on factors like the name of the author or the historical background to the poem in understanding its meaning the idea that he wanted to convey was that these are insignificant as far as our understanding of poems are concerned perhaps you need the details regarding a poet and also the historical background or the time during which it was written but for understanding poetry it's these data are not essential he demonstrates how the readers of poetry are crippled in their responses and documents the main difficulties of sensitive criticism they are failure to grasp the sense of the poem and insensitivity to the form and meaning of words in a sequence and these are some of uh, the uh, difficulties that i r richards found that that prevents us from understanding the actual meaning of a poem the second is sensuous apprehension of poetry but you do that by considering poetry as a thing of beauty alone the third is difficulty presented by imagery primarily by visual imagery the fourth is intrusions made by private and personal memories mnemonic ideas entities stock responses sentimentality extravagant or affected feeling or emotion that is what sentimentality is your inhibitions uh, doctrinal additions the kind of beliefs and doctrines that you 
share as part of a community or a culture or a or a nation so adherence to such doctrines technical presuppositions and finally critical preconceptions so these are some of the difficulties that i hear richard state that would prevent us from coming at a better understanding of the meaning of poetry so these are some of his important contributions to english literary criticism i gave you a short introduction to the biography of the critic i discussed some of his uh, literary works as well as critical works i spoke about the ideas like his theory of value in the arts and also his theory of language and the four different kinds of meaning i also uh, discussed some of his important ideas regarding poetry and finally i came to practical criticism which is the movement that is closely associated with ir charles thank you so much for being with me and for watching this video lesson i will see you in the next video lesson